Yes, we're back on 67 Hail Hail on YouTube. My name is Hamish Carton. Joining me this week, it's not John Reed, it's the other one. No. David Hi, Walton. the other one. How are you doing? Ah, not too bad. Not a good week for us. So. Fantastic. So if we're going to get into all that in just a wee second, first of all, a wee bit of housekeeping to do. Um, as we say every week, if you've not yet um, followed us on YouTube, why? Or not subscribing, that's what they call it. And so if you've not said subscribed, ah, why? But it's okay, I'll let you away with it if you <laughs> do it right now. Um, as we said last week as well, the podcast that we are part of, Boys V Blue Noses, give yeah. that a wee follow, a subscribe <laughs> on YouTube as well. That'd be very much appreciated. Um, also, while we're on the, the topic of 67 Hail Hail, we're also on social media. We've been on it for a wee while, but yeah. we're taking it a bit more seriously now, just like Celtic have in 2020. Um, we're on Facebook. You can just search the wee bar, 67 Hail Hail. Um, Twitter, the handle is at 67 Hail Hail. Um, basically, if you like the website and you like reading our stuff and also like watching us talk about Celtic, there's basically everything all grouped into one place. We post some short videos. We um, post likes to the YouTube videos. We also post a lot of articles, as well as just some interesting tweets that maybe add something else extra to the articles. So give us a follow there, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. Website 67hailhail.com. Good plug. Right. Anyway, Celtic, have we won the league? Nah, you know what? I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say we've won the league just yet. Because, I, I mean, you, you, that's the kind of phrase that just comes back to bite you, but, innit? Right. So I, I, I'll tell you what. That was massive. Absolutely yeah. massive at Pitaudry during the weekend. Uh, so many times last season I felt... Um, we had a chance to race away from Rangers before we ultimately did, mm. and we made a, a total arse of it, to be quite honest with you. I thought yesterday had the potential to be like that again, just when we were picking up some real momentum. But there you go, superb. A real bit of character shown by them. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we won the league at Rugby Park. Scott Brown won the league at Rugby Park a year ago today, the day mm -hmm. we were recording. I think we went eight or nine points eight clear eight at points that point. Clear, at the moment, we're... 10, but it's kind of artificial. It's 7, really, if Rangers yeah. win a game in hand. I don't know about you, but it feels different this year. We don't feel like we're quite as close as we were last year, even though it's a similar margin. It's a weird one. Is that because, you know, Rangers have improved, or is it because we've not got Brendan Rodgers in what, charge? What do you mean we don't feel we're as close? So, so see, when, when Scott Brown scored that winning goal at Rugby Park, I felt that was a title done. And Aye. it's the same time of the year. It's the middle of February. Similar margin. There's maybe a point or two in it. This year... I still feel right. there's a bit longer to go. I well, still feel that we need a few more wins. I mean, last year we still had two derbies remaining. Aye, so aye. It's, it's the same situation, but it See, feels different. From our perspective, even even when we scored that late one at Rugby Park last season, it was in February, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was still kind of one of those ones was a bit like, well, aye. we'll wait a couple of games. When Edward scored at Dundee, I that thought was that the was the one. Um, that, that was, felt that monumental. That must have been late March, early aye, April. It was. So. And then also we went on to beat Rangers, and that was just, you know further sort of mm. clarification. I think this season, you just need, for me, one more one more loss for Rangers, and I think it really is curtains. Mm -hmm. um, well, that'll come against us, or <laughs> St. Johnson, who knows, but uh, we're close, we're really close, and I think when you're talking about some fans, um, you know, maybe thinking it's a bit closer this year, that goes, for me, back to the first half of the season that Rangers had when they went on that winning run. They've shown they are capable of going on a run. Um, whether they can do it in the second half of the season when the pressure's really on, though, no. I mean, that's doubtful. So I think that's where maybe other people's concerns come from. But for me, the title's not over just yet. I, I, yeah, so no, I mean, I'll tend to agree with that. We'll yeah. probably come on and talk about this at the end of the video. We're just touching yesterday first. Obviously, Callum McGregor had his uh, ahead pretty early on. Yeah. Ash Taylor then scores a pretty good equaliser, a good finish for a centre-back, I thought. Um, and then the game rumbles on. It looks like, you know, it's, it's going to be drop points for us until, I think, the 80th minute. Christopher Ayer steps forward, put to right back as we went to the back four, strides forward, acres of space, and takes it like a striker. It was a magical moment, and I know we're, we're not saying the league's over. I don't think either of us are saying no, that, as you've just no, said. But it did feel like a big victory. And the way Neil Lennon celebrated after Aye. the game, running over at the fans. And I know he, he, post-match he kind of commented on you know the weather and the fact the fans had travelled all that way, and that's why he did it. It wasn't a normal celebration. It, it, Lennon does not make a beeline for the supporters. It was that. reminiscent of Dens Park last year. It was, I, it was. Um, I think Neil himself will feel it's a massive, massive step. So I think that that's sort of justification for why went over the supporters. Um, the supporters' reaction to him as well told you it was a big step, I think. Um, yeah, I've not seen him do that 
and many other guys. I don't even think when we won at Ibrox, he was right over to the supporters. I yeah. think he, he made his way over like he does every game. But he was the first one over. You know, he was the first Aye. one over, yeah. Um, so, I, I think for the game itself, I thought it was pretty even. I thought Aberdeen looked quite good. They looked a lot more competitive than I remember on being at Pataudry against us. I mean, according to McInnes, you know, you'd think they should have won about three or four nothing. I mean, he was talking about how they were the better team for 90 minutes. It was even. It was evenly matched for me. I think the stats showed that as well. 50% possession, six shots each. Somebody maybe wants to tell McInnes they only had about three on target. Uh, it wasn't brilliant from us, but, you know, we weren't, we weren't second best. You know, I thought a draw would have been a fair result. Um, but our class is kind of told there with Ayers' goal. And what I will say is credit to McInnes because he did give Celtic plenty of plaudits after the game too for the class he showed to win the game. But um, I'm not having any of this with our second best nonsense. Yeah, I mean, it's the poorest we've played, I think, since we came back for the that. winter break. I think that's a, a fair comment. You could go through the team and for me, not many of yep. them stood out. You look, I mean, throughout the team, even Fraser Foster, I thought at times was a little bit shaky Aye, yesterday. What was some of those flat? See the one that was in the uh, air and dropped down. Bizarre. Like I mean, I know the wind had a hold of that, but it was just a bizarre <laughs> kind of sequence of events. But I just thought in general we were pretty poor. We were lax in possession. We weren't getting first to you know first and second balls. Um, Aberdeen, I thought, were maybe slightly the better team, only slightly. But again, like you said, it didn't create anything. It's not as if well, Foster's I mean, I had remember, to make a wonder I think save or he's had, to, he's had to save one more for Funso Ojo in the first half. But that was pretty distance. tame itself. Yeah, right. shot for distance, yeah. Outside of that, he's had nothing to do. When you throw some balls into the opposition box, it doesn't mm. mean you're dominating them, you know. I think dominating and unsettling are two different things. Yeah. And I think Aberdeen really unsettled us yesterday. I think a draw would have been the right result. But we're watching the game and, you know, 65, 70 minutes and we're really, we were struggling, I think it's fair to say we, we were struggling because we weren't getting going, our key players weren't getting involved, you know, and Cham was pretty anonymous, um, yep. McGregor wasn't in the game at all, Edward was quiet, but I don't know about you, but watching the game I always still felt we'd get one chance and I thought it'd come when Johnny Hayes missed it, but then we obviously get one more and I just wasn't totally surprised, even though we're playing with all these caveats of, you know, horrendous weather conditions, playing against, you know, we have a go at Aberdeen, but they're still probably the third or fourth best team in Scotland. They played well, and we still found a way to win, and that just well, sums up this team for me. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a lot better at the counter-attack this year, I think. I think McKinnis said, I mean, a really good point after the game, to be fair to him, when he said that Celtic are still the best team in the league yeah, when it comes that. to counter-attack, and, and those goals yesterday, particularly the, the second one, was absolutely terrific. I actually thought when Forrest started cutting inside, I was kind of rolling my eyes thinking the chance was about to go. Great ball but, though. Uh, it was a terrific ball. It just kind of opened up. You were just like, oh my God, that's Christopher Ayer. It all comes through. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, all comes through Ayer darting right over the pitch. You see Considine, the replay, just sort of waltzing back. But it was terrible defending, to be honest, when he's seen Ayer running towards the box. But it was just a class goal all round. The Edward flick, sensational for a player Brilliant. that was, like you say, so quiet during the game. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Celtic still had their moments of class, and that was us on a bad day yesterday. So it, it bodes really well for the run in. Last season, we spoke we spoke a few weeks ago about last season on this eight game run in the league. We're one game away from matching that. That's seven now we've won the league, isn't it? Yep. So seven and nine in total in 2020, including the Cups. That's terrific. And where's it going to stop? Where's that winning run going to stop at the minute, the way they're playing? Yeah, I mean, we're. We'll talk about the, the league title now. We're, we're 10 clear with... We've got 11 games to play. Rangers have got 12. There's no many. There's no many exactly. at all. Games are running out. Rangers can only get 99 points. That's if they win every match, including the final two derbies, they get 99 points. So we know 100 does the business. They can't, they can't better that. At the moment, I think we're 73. So it's that nine more wins from our last 11 games. And when you add the fact that our goal difference is now about, I think, 13 or 14 better than Rangers. Point, so we're in a really good position the reason I don't want to go all out and say we've won the title yet is because we have got a few tricky away games mm. coming up. We've got living. I don't know what order, but we've got Livingston, Hibs, and Rangers are the big three. We yeah. had we had five big ones: Motherwell and Aberdeen. In. Motherwell and Aberdeen both been navigated, and yeah, as you say, three tough games over the last couple of years that we've dropped points in, and three of the form teams in the country. And I think if we can come out with those three games, even with seven, seven points, points no matter where they come from. Obviously, ideally, you're getting the draw at Ibrox to stop them winning. But even if we get seven points, you know, elsewhere, I think I think that's as a basically across the line. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You're totally right to point out those fixtures. I mean, surely we're not going to go to Livingston again, though, and, and not win the game tricky for though, a man. third time. Tricky game. I well, you know, Rangers haven't found it as tricky recently, so hopefully we can turn up there for a change. Um, 
Hibs give us some right good games at Easter Road. Uh, really, really do. They open up. They, they want to play football. They're impressive against us. That will be a tough one, regardless of what form they're in. Um, and obviously Rangers away, you're talking about, you know, maybe get the point there. If we get a point there, I'll be jumping up and down if we stop them getting that one. Because yeah, that will be the title us, They have to beat us twice. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, some might not like the fact that it's maybe back to that idea of getting a draw at Ibrox. I think when you look at the bigger picture, it's vital we don't lose there. Yeah. Um, we'll be going to win, of course. But, you know, you're right. Seven points out of those three fixtures, over. So I think we've got a couple of home games kind of interspersed in there as well. Kilmarnock and... Yeah, but you don't, you don't fear any of that at home, do you? Johnson, but I could be wrong in the league. There's another home game in there anyway. I think as long as we take care of those games and seven points from those tricky three away games, and you've got to remember after the split, we're going to have a, an easier a run. They're going to have to go to Pataudry, I think, after the split. They're going to yeah. have to come to us. Hibs as well. I think, though, I don't think they'll win. They'll be think about it like this, I think he'll sort of be a one game at a time man, exactly, you know, yeah, you yeah. Have to be. I mean if we, you know, if we go and win our next league game and then Rangers go and lose theirs, it lo suddenly you just need four points or something for those three games, you know, I don't think he'll ball in like that, just tick the games off one by one, we'll get closer to the title on nine in a row. Nine wins till nine in a row? Is that what it is, nine wins? Nice ring to it, doesn't nine it? Wins. Nine more no. wins Celtic. I suppose it is, aye. Do the business. Doesn't really matter where you get them. Just nah. do the business. Doesn't matter where or when we win it, but yeah. just make sure you do. But we're in a wonderful position, and you just yeah. could not have believed this six weeks ago. You really couldn't. No. I, I, I don't know about you, but I thought we were in this neck and neck, and I thought it was going to be going into the split thinking, shit, three points ahead. I, th I thought they were more formidable than they are. Yeah. yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, their result of the weekend wasn't impressive at all. So it's looking good for us still, even after another round. Fantastic. Thanks again, David, for your time. Cheers, Thank much. you for watching. We really do appreciate all the, the views and the, yeah, the watches absolutely. we're getting from everyone yeah. because we're getting some pretty good um, feedback in the main. You always hate the odd one, but we try not to nah, hurt us too much. But nah. we do appreciate you taking the time. And if you want to tell a pal about it, feel free. We wouldn't hold you against that. If you're enjoying the stuff and you're out in the pub and you think, oh, I want to tell a pal about how these wonderful guys chat about Sorry. Celtic, then feel free to do it. As I said at the start, we're 67 Hail Hail on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook as well. And if you've not yet subscribed, give that a wee go as well.